In this demonstration, I'll show you how to solve optimization problems in calculus. This is part four of the series. Specifically in this video, I'll show you how to solve a problem involving trigonometry. The question reads, what angle theta between two edges of length three will result in an isosceles triangle with the largest area? Now, in order to answer this question effectively, you'll need to know what isosceles means. And an isosceles triangle is simply a triangle that has two sides of equal length. And the angles making up those two sides are also the same. So let's start off by drawing a diagram. What we have is a triangle where this side and this side is equal to 3. And we'll call this angle at this vertex theta. And what we want is an angle that will give us the largest area. So we'll start off by writing out the formula for the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is equal to base times height times half. Or base times height over 2. And we don't know the height, nor do we know the base. So let's show that the height is this, and the base is the length from here to here. Now to generate our formula, what we could do is split this triangle into half. And if we do that, we end up with two right triangles. Now, to find the base, what you'll need to do is split the triangle into two. And if we take this as a reference angle, we can find the base by doing the following. Sine of theta divided by two, since we have split the triangle, is equal to the opposite, which is base over 2, and the hypotenuse is 3. So if we simplify the right side, we end up with base over 6, and on the right side we have sine theta over 2. And we're going to solve for b by multiplying both sides by 6, and we end up with the following. So that is our b value. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the height, but of course you can't use sine, you're going to need to use cosine. Cosine relates half the angle adjacent, which is the height, over 3. And we're going to take this, bring it up here, 3 cosine half is equal to h. So we are going to replace b and h with the following. And the formula becomes area is equal to 6 sine theta over 2 times 3 cosine theta over 2, all divided by 2, which gives us 9 sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2. The next thing we'll need to do is find the derivative of this formula. The product rule states that if you have a function that consists of two terms, and in our case, let's call this f, and let's call this g, you'll need to find the derivative of this, multiply to this function, and then add the derivative of this to this function. So let's start with that. Let's start by finding the derivative of this. 9 times the derivative of sine, which is equal to cosine, leave this part the way it is, and then find the derivative of the inside. And that would equal 2, simply half. Now, the reason why is because this is the same thing as saying 1 over 2. And if we were to use uh, theta as our x value, as we usually do, this would disappear and you would end up with half. So I'm just going to move this a little bit. And I'm going to keep this the way it is. Plus, now we're going to keep that the way it is and find the derivative of cosine. And the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this I'll change to negative and I'll write down sine theta, and then the derivative of theta over 2 is equal to half. And we end up with the following. 9 over 2, 9 over 2, cosine squared theta over 2. And similarly, on the left side, we have 9 over 2 sine squared theta over 2. And we can factor out the 9 over 2 to give us 9 over 2. The next step is to set this derivative equal to 0 so that we can find the critical points as we did in 
all the other examples before. So we're going to set a is equal to 0. And if we do that, we end up with the following. 0 is equal to cosine squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2. I'm going to bring this term over. We end up with sine squared theta over 2 cosine squared theta over 2. Notice how both of these terms are squared. So you can square root both sides, and you end up with the following. And also recall that tangent theta is equal to sine over cosine. So if I divide both sides by cosine at this point, I end up with the following. Sine theta over 2 cosine theta over 2, which leads me to tangent theta over 2 is equal to 1. Now, to isolate for what's inside here, the angle, you can take the inverse tangent of both sides. And if you take the inverse tangent of both sides, you end up with the following. Theta over 2 is equal to tangent inverse of 1. And on your calculator, that is equal to 45 degrees. But since we're working with radians here, it's pi over 4. We're still not done. We still need to find out what our theta is. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2, and we end up with pi over 2. Now we have to find out if 90 degrees will give you the maximum area. And the only way to do that is to evaluate this in our original equation. Our original equation looked like this. Area was equal to 9 times sine. And so let's plug this number in into our theta. And we end up with, make sure your calculator is in radians, times cosine pi divided by 2 over 2. And the answer we get is 9 over 2. Now, since a triangle ranges from 0 to 180 degrees, we can also evaluate what happens at 0 and 180 degrees, just to make sure. So let's do that, just to be 100% sure. What is sine and cosine at those angles? 9 times sine of 0 gives us 0. So that leads to 0 if we use the angle 0. And what about pi? And we also get 0. So therefore, we can conclude that at an angle of pi over 2, you will get the largest area. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.